Germany is urging allies who can send tanks to Ukraine to, quote, do so now. That's right. The uh, German chancellor made those comments today during the Munich Security Conference, which is ongoing, the war in Ukraine, high on the agenda. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky also spoke, saying, quote, there is no alternative to Ukrainian victory. He urged world leaders to deliver more weapons to the battlefield. Russia, meanwhile, unleashed another air assault on Ukraine overnight. Uh, shelling uh, reportedly killed at least five people in the eastern Donetsk region and at least three near Kherson. Ukrainian officials are now telling thousands of civilians still living near Bakhmut to evacuate. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett joins us now from inside Ukraine. Charlie, uh, bring us up to date. What are officials hoping to accomplish at the conference uh, regarding Ukraine in the short term? Yeah, well, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron, are talking about cooperation. Uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky, he led uh, the conference with a, a video link, via video link, and really, it's all about speed. It's all about weapons. They need to get the weapons here as quickly as possible. You can sense the urgency from President Zelensky. Now, uh, Olaf Scholz, he has said, we need to get the tanks there. We need to get the German tanks, the Leopard tanks, into Ukraine. And he urged other countries to get them here as quickly as possible because Germany has decided under licensing laws, German's licensing laws, that those other allied countries can let those tanks go in. Uh, it takes a, an element of training, a level of training, but they need to get here quickly because, you know, as you mentioned, there have been attacks all along the front line in the Donbass region here in Kharkiv. And the Russians are on the attack. I mean, President Zelensky said that the Russian offensive, as we've been expecting, it has begun. Now, it, it happens in measure. There are many, many places for the Russians to attack, and there are many ways for the Russians to attack. They've got long-range missiles, and that's what can hit places like here in Kharkiv. Then there's the artillery, and that's what we've been seeing in places like Bakhmut and along the front line. And, you know, we spoke to frontline commanders, and they're saying it's not just the, the artillery uh, itself, but it's the ammunition, and they're just burning through it quicker than nations can provide it. So Zelensky has been very, very clear right from the very beginning uh, that they need more weapons, tanks to one side, definitely in terms of the artillery and definitely, definitely in terms of the ammunition. And it's about the speed. It's about the urgency. I mean, in his words, the sooner we get them here, the sooner they get the weapons and the ammunition that they need, more lives will be saved. Well, Russian President Vladimir Putin wants military cooperation from Belarus, but his Belarusian counterpart, Alexander Lukashenko, says his country will not get involved unless they are attacked. He even called for peace talks. So, Charlie, what kind of position does this war put Lukashenko in, and what would Belarus entering this war mean for Ukraine? Yeah, well, Elaine, we have to remember that Belarus is already part of this conflict. We'll take this back to, you know, we're coming up on the year anniversary. Russian forces invaded this country from Belarus, and they made their move toward Kiev. And that was very, very important. You know, when we talk about the geography, part of Russia toward the east is miles and miles away from Kiev, the capital. It's not too far from here, or Kiev. I mean, it's just a couple hours drive in one direction. So so this area and along the east is certainly within reach of Russian firepower, and they've made that clear. The Russians have been in the Donbass region, Luhansk, for a number of years, so since 2014, 2015. But when it came to trying to take over the capital, that came from Belarus. Remember, there are tens of thousands of Russian forces that have been uh, stationed there and, and used that as a staging point. So mm -hmm. Belarus in a manner of speaking, is already part of this conflict. Now, what Lukashenko is saying today is they're not going to enter it. So there won't be Belarusian uh, troops or artillery or equipment that's going to come into this country. But in, in the same at the same time, you know, it's been seen as a warning because what he said is if a single Belarusian soldier or citizen uh, is, is hurt or injured or killed in this conflict, well, then Belarus will enter it. And we've seen situations... It's not that far from the border. There's a lot of fighting. There are tons of Ukrainian forces trying to reinforce that border. So it is a tense sort of standoff already. Uh, there are major concerns that we've spoken to 
um, the, Reznikov, who's the defense uh, minister here, he said he's not that concerned about Belarus entering it in any meaningful way. They don't have the number of forces. They certainly don't have the kind of equipment that would be needed. Uh, as we've seen, they've already been able to, to take uh, on Russia, Russia's best. So Belarus isn't in that sort of league. But Belarus, because of where it is and its proximity to uh, Kyiv, remains a player. And there are Russian forces who are still in Belarus. So it remains a, a tense situation along that border. And it's because the vulnerability of the capital itself. And, you know, we spoke to uh, the mayor of Kyiv, Klitschko, a couple of days ago, and he said the Russians have already made clear, and he believes this to be the case still, that they want to take over the capital. So it, it, they're, we're looking at this, or they're looking at that. Belarus remains a threat simply because it's allied with Russia. All right, Charlie Zangada, uh, thank you. And viewers should be aware we'll have special coverage next week as, as this war approaches its one-year mark. We appreciate it. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks.